So today's lecture is on one way of of errors. This is part of early detection, which is our following. So in this lecture, we are going to look at uh, some introduction. What is um, ANOVA? And also uh, we look at the basics of ANOVA. ANOVA stands for analysis of variance. And the last part will be how to solve statistical problems using ANOVA methods. So now let's have a look at some introduction. Uh, what is ANOVA? ANOVA stands for, as I said just now, is analysis of variance. Um, this test is one of the parametric tests, which is used to compare uh, more than two groups. Yeah? Before this, we study about t-test, whereby t-test is used to compare parametric data of two groups. Yeah? two groups. So when we have more than two groups of parametric data, we use ANOVA. Uh, and it's not only just uh, three, but it could be more than uh, that, yeah? three and above, three at least because it's more than two. Um, so in this topic, we are going to look at uh, one way ANOVA. Yeah? So what does this one way means? One way indicates that there is only one variable that are that we look at, yeah? or we, we call also factor. So for example, if we are comparing two samples, right, and then uh, we want to look at uh, the marks, yeah? sorry, not two, three samples. So we, let's say we have uh, we, we have this uh, as the parameter or as the factor or variable. Eh? So the marks of uh, group one, group two, and group three. Okay, so uh, this marks is called the variable or the factor. Okay, um, and within that marks, eh, we can, within this factor, we can uh, maybe divide into few levels. Maybe we classify the marks uh, from, let's say, from 0 to uh, 20, 20 marks. Eh? And then from 21% to, let's say, uh, 40. And then 41% to uh, 60. Then 61% to 80 and 81% to 100. So this is what we call, within the, the same uh, factor, we classify it or we divide it into few levels, and this is what we call levels. Each of these is called a level. Um, so we can divide the levels in order for us to simplify. We want to know that, let's say, for uh, every level that we define here, how many students got this particular marks. Uh, so that is the purpose of levels, is actually to facilitate the comparison. And we can also compare across the groups. Yeah? For example, group one, group two, and group three. And we can compare like, for example, uh, for level 41 to 60, how this, uh, the comparison between uh, the groups looks like. Okay, so that is the purpose of levels. So in ANOVA, we also have this uh, particular thing, level, right? Um, and the number of levels, it can be two or more levels. But the, the higher the number of levels, uh, the more um, complex the comparison will be, okay? And be the, the more tedious it will be, the comparison. Okay. So that's some introduction about uh, ANOVA. Uh, when we talk about ANOVA, when we want to use this test, uh, this test is used uh, for comparing uh, more than two groups of parametric data. And also another thing that we have to bear in mind is that uh, the population from which the samples were obtained must be normal. Yeah. So the assumption is that the populations are normal. So only that we can use the one-way ANOVA test. Uh, and then the samples must be independent. That is another important uh, factor. The first one is the population must be normal. And the second one is the samples must be uh, independent. 
Yeah, independent means that it does not uh, differ. It does not depend on uh, each other. Yeah, the samples are. It can stand by its own. And then the variances of the population must be equal. So those are the assumptions that we have to uh, refer to when we want to use one-way ANOVA test, right? Now let's have a look at how we want to develop the hypothesis for ANOVA. Yeah. So every statistical test we must have the hypothesis before we proceed with the data analysis. So since here ANOVA is designed for uh, comparing means of more than uh, two groups. So obviously we uh, have to think that eh, for ANOVA, at least we must have three groups. Yeah? Uh, if we have three groups, each of these is uh, denoted or represented by the value, the mean value. Yeah? Let's say we name it as mu, mu1, mu2, and mu3. So in this case, if we want to develop the hypothesis, uh, for the null hypothesis, we can say that there is no difference between the mean 1, mean 2, and mean 3. Or in equation, we can write uh, mu 1 is equal to mu 2 is equal to mu 3. Okay? So example here is uh, up to mu 5. So it, it means that if let's say we have uh, 5 samples, so we can write up to how many samples we have. Okay? Uh, this is null hypothesis, and for the alternative hypothesis, uh, it means that it's the other way around. Uh, it, it states that at least one of the mean is not equal or is different, yeah, or different. Okay, so in, in terms of the expression, we can write H1 uh, as mu1 is not equal to mu2, is not equal to mu3, it's not equal to mu4, it's not equal to mu5. Okay, it depends on how many samples that we have. All right, so that's how we set the hypothesis for ANOVA. And then uh, some more um, introduction in terms of the basics of ANOVA, right? Uh, ANOVA is the extension of uh, two group comparison embodied in t-test. It is an extension of t-test, in other words. Uh, Understanding ANOVA requires some shift in logic. So what it means here. So if let's say we only have two groups, two groups. So it means that uh, whatever the difference, uh, we know that the difference is between sample one and sample two. But if let's say we have more than two groups, let's say three, right? So this is one, two, and three. So if let's say we say that there is a difference in, in the mean of one, two, and three, uh, it can be that the difference lies between mu1 and mu2, but perhaps mu2 and mu3 is equal, okay? Uh, but that is enough to say that uh, all the means are not uh, equal or are different, okay? So if let's say um, it is not between mu1 and mu2, it could be between mu1 and mu3 or mu1 and mu3 oh, sorry mu2 and mu3 or mu1 and mu3 so those are the possible pairs that could have the difference okay so that is um, what we have to play around with uh, ANOVA test so if we have more than uh, three samples we have to match uh, more yeah let's say we have uh, four or five samples yeah so it could be between mu1 and mu2, mu1 and mu1 and mu3, uh, mu1 and mu4, mu1 and mu5, and so on. You have to match like one by one. So this is what is meant by here. Yeah. So if we have five, five samples, five mean, and we want to know uh, the possible uh, comparison or difference, where the difference lies. It could be between all of these combinations, yeah, for five uh, samples. Okay, so uh, ANOVA stands for analysis of variance. So it means that um, the test is built based on 
the comparison of variance. A variance is the difference. So what is this variance all about? Um, so it could be, it is defined as, it's denoted by this uh, parameter F, where F is defined as the ratio uh, of variance among sample means to the variance expected from sampling error. Okay, so uh, throughout the ANOVA test uh, later, uh, which we will go through, we will look at uh, this value, actually, the F value. And uh, we want to compare it with uh, the standards F, and that will lead us to uh, the decision whether we uh, accept null or we accept the alternative hypothesis. But before that, we need to understand what is, what is this F value is all about. Yeah? So it's defined as the variance among the sample means uh, to the variance expected from sampling error. So let's say if we have uh, three samples, yeah? so this is uh, mean one, mean one, mean two, and mean three. So the variance among the sample means is, re is uh, referring to the difference between all of these means, okay? So this is what is meant by the first, uh, by the uh, numerator, by the numerator, by this one, yeah? And what is meant by the variance expected from the sampling error? So let's say sample one, we have a few data, yeah? And each of these data, we could say that those are the replicates, the replicates of a sample one, okay? Uh, and we and what is associated with replication is that uh, there is a difference between one sample or one point to another point within the same sample, right? So the variation between the points or the data within the same sample that is meant by uh, this one, yeah? the uh, the sampling error, yeah, because all of these are replicates and they actually uh, lead to the mu, yeah, uh, the, the average value, and the variance between all the points represent the variance of the sampling error, okay? So that is meant by um, the uh, denominator over here. And the ratio of these two makes the F value, okay? All right. Uh, in ANOVA terminology, variance is often called mean square, okay, and it's defined by uh, this one, the sum of squares divided by the degree of freedom, and that will give the value of um, the, the variance, yeah, okay. Now, let's have a look at uh, the most important part, uh, which is the steps of ANOVA. So what are the steps that we have to do when we want to analyze any statistical problem using ANOVA test, okay? So these are all the steps. So altogether, there are uh, five main steps, yeah? So if you see step one until step five, but uh, if you see step two, step one, okay, let's have a look first. Step one is to set the hypothesis uh, both null and alternative hypothesis we have uh, discussed just now. And then uh, step, two, step two is to fill in what we call ANOVA table. Okay, ANOVA table is, uh, is the main part of the calculation. I'll, I'll show later what is ANOVA table, but first let's have a look at the main steps. Uh, the step three is to find the critical F from F table. So in, uh, in ANOVA, we have to refer to a standard uh, table, and the standard table is called F table, yeah? And then based on the uh, comparison of calculated and critical F, okay, for the calculated F is obtained from the ANOVA table, yeah, from step two. So the critical F or the... Uh, theoretical F is obtained from the F table, which is step three, okay? So it means after you complete step three, you will get the value of F calculated and also the critical F. So those F values are to be compared, yeah, which is uh, to be done in step four. 
And you have to refer to this decision rule, whereby if the F calculator is less than the F table of, or the F critical, you have to conclude null hypothesis, saying that there is no difference between all the means that you compare. But if the F calculator is greater than the F table, then you have to conclude the alternative hypothesis, means that there is a difference between uh, the means of samples that you compare. All right, so that is the decision. Yeah? And finally is to make a conclusion whereby you have to construct the sentences, the conclusions properly. Yeah, so you have to uh, revise back what is your null hypothesis, what is your uh, alternative hypothesis. Yeah? If you accept the null hypothesis, you should say that there is no difference between sample uh, sample one and you have to define it specifically based on the problems that you are analyzing. Okay, so that is the conclusion. Right, now let's have a look at step two in detail. So if you see here, there are a few things that you have to find out in step two, right? Uh, before that, let's have a look at what is meant by ANOVA table. So this is ANOVA table. The whole thing here. This is called ANOVA table where you have to construct this table in order to reach the F value. The ultimate aim of this uh, ANOVA table is to find the F value. This is the F calculated. Okay, so why um, why I said that the ultimate aim of uh, this ANOVA table is to reach this one is because um, all the values over here, yeah, uh, the F and then the sum of squares, this is what we call uh, SS. And here, if you have a look here, so this is treatment. There is There are two uh, important things, and this is error, yeah? So treatments is actually the samples. Yeah? So if you have uh, three samples, means that you have three treatments. And within the group or within the treatment, is uh okay just now here this is uh, let's say you have three treatments or three groups so this is treatment yeah treatment means you have three but what is meant by uh error here or within the groups so within the treatment each of this treatment you might have several uh, points yeah so this is what we call this is what we uh term as uh, error yeah which is actually the variation within the group. And we just put it like E over here, and T as T. All right, so this is uh, this is an example. It's not actually the value that you have to uh, remember, but this is just an example of values that have been solved. Yeah? Uh, so this is referring to SST, and this is SSE. Yeah? And this one, the degree of freedom, is referring to the degree of freedom for the treatment and this one is the degree of freedom for the error. Okay, and then uh, if we move to the next column after the sum of squares, this one is the mean square or is denoted as MS. Yeah. So for the treatment, we call it MST and uh, for the error is called MSE. Yeah. So just now SST, SSE, and this one is referring to TSS, total sum of squares, okay? And total sum of squares is actually equal to SST plus SSE, yeah? So if you add these two values, you will get uh, this value, yeah? Right. Um, so now how we want to find the MST, yeah? MST is uh, the formula is SST divided by uh, degree of freedom for the treatment, yeah? And for the MSE, that is equal to SSE divided by degree of freedom for the error. And the F value depends on the ratio of uh, MST to MSE. Yeah, so that's why all the values here actually it will lead to the determination of the F calculated. Okay, 
Now let's have a look at how we're going to solve, how we're going to find the value of each of these things. Yeah? All right, so this is the general form of the table I've mentioned about it just now. Uh, the degree of freedom for the treatment, for the error, uh, the, the formula for the degree of freedom for the treatment is uh, T minus 1. Yeah, if you have three samples, so the degree of freedom is 3 minus 1, which is equal to 2. Uh, for the error is N minus T. N is the number of data, uh, the number of points or data that you have for all of the samples. Okay. Uh, N minus T is equal to the degree of freedom for the error. Right. Uh, now, the sum of squares for the treatment, SST, uh, uh, will, I'll show up to this how to find this one because this one is based on uh, some more calculation. But just go through first, yeah? SSE, TSS, yeah? please uh, familiarize yourself with the term because uh, you're going to refer to all of this uh, abbreviation yeah? after this. And um, MS is MS uh, mean square, mean square of treatment, mean square of error. And the F here is this one, yeah? the ratio of uh, mean square of mean square of the treatment divided by mean square of the error. Okay, um, to understand more uh, what this SST and TSS formula is all about, I think it's better to see an example after this. Okay, uh, let's go through things that are quite easy first. Yeah? This one is, oh yeah, this one is just to show how you solve for the degree of freedom. It's quite straightforward. Okay. Um, Okay, uh, this is the formula for the SST. Mm -hmm. Okay, I will show in an example after this, uh, just to go through the slide first. Huh? Don't worry if you're still not really clear at this point. Okay, yeah. so the F is actually, the, the final aim is to find the F value. Right, so that is, um, Let's skip first uh, the, the, uh, the steps how to find this thing. Okay, uh, I'll go to the critical F first. Yeah. Um, so remember that here is F calculated, F, F that we calculate. Uh, so we call it F calculated. So another F value that we have to find is the uh, F value from the table, or we call it critical F. Huh? So this is F table. This is actually step three, not step two, sorry. Okay, so how we want to find the F uh, value from the table. So we have to refer to uh, F distribution table, we call it. Yeah. Uh, so this is the standard table that we have to refer. And uh, what are the references? How we want to find whatsoever the values of F eh, is based on uh, the degree of freedom for the treatment and the degree of freedom for the error. Okay, so it's denoted as uh, this one. Okay. Uh, the degree of freedom for the uh, treatment and the degree of freedom for the error. Okay, so this one, the number one here is referring to treatment. And this one is referring to the error. Okay, let's say from the previous example, we have uh, the degree of freedom of 4 and 45, yeah? Um, so let's say uh, V1 is 4, V2 is uh, 45, and then we want to know what is the F value. So another thing that we have to uh, refer is um, whether we want to define uh, the level of significance alpha as a 0 0.05 or uh, 0 0.01 okay so this one is uh, the same if let's say in the question that you are analyzing is not given then you have to define by yourself but you have to define in your workout yeah? if let's say you use alpha equal to 0 0.05 please write somewhere in your workout that you are referring to that uh, value of alpha okay so that leads to 
uh, what is meant here, 5% um, Roman type and 1% bold face type. So in the F table, this is the F table, you will see there are two uh, different values for each of the column. Yeah. Uh, so that is meant by the, the Roman type at uh, the non bold uh, font and also the bold face type. Yeah. So if you are referring to 5%, just now let's say, let's say 5%, and our value here just now is a um, new one, um, which is four, yeah, let's say here four. Actually, this F double is uh, quite long. This is just a uh, part of it, yeah? Okay, let's say we go directly into those um, 45 and, uh, What's the value just now? Four and yeah, four and forty-five. Okay, this one is this one gives the value the same. So uh, the one that you refer the horizontal, this one should be the degree of freedom of treatment. Okay. And the vertical part, if you see the vertical part over here, this is referring to the uh, degree of freedom for the error. Okay, so just now the degree for freedom for the error is 45 and for the treatment is uh, 4. So now we refer to the column of 4, yeah, and the value here, uh, 44, 45. Okay, there is 44, 46. There is no 45 value, but you just, you just get the value that is the nearest. Okay, so if let's say you are referring to uh, 5%, the F value that you are looking for is uh, 2.58. Okay, the reason why I choose this one, even though uh, 45 should be between 44, 46, right? But if you see the value here is 2.57. So if you want to think that if let's say 45, it should be something between 2.57 and 2.58. So it should be 2.575, isn't it? So if you round up, it will be 2. 5, 8. So that's why we take uh, the value that is uh, bigger. Okay. So this value is chosen to represent uh, the value of F critical uh, at 5% when V1 is equal to 4 and V2 is equal to 45. Okay. I hope that's clear. So once you get that F, that is F double value. And you want to compare with the uh, calculated uh, F that you have determined from the uh, from the ANOVA table. And the decision rule is this one. Yeah? So if you compare and you found out that the F calculated is less than F table, then you conclude hash node. And if it is the other way around, you conclude alternative hypothesis. Okay. So that is about F. Okay, now let's have a look at one example and see how uh, we solve uh, the values of the F, uh, sorry, the, the values for the ANOVA table, yeah, specifically, okay. So this example uh, is about uh, the nitrogen level of, uh, the, the nitrogen level in UC Derozylon Zweiger seedlings after applying five different types of fertilizers, okay. So the question asks, do the above data present sufficient evidence to indicate a difference in the mean of N level for the five different fertilizers at alpha equal to 0 0.01? So the moment you see this type of data, you know that there are more than two samples. Yeah? Uh, so obviously you know that you can't use t-test, but you have to move to N over test. Yeah? And even though it says in the question that there are five different fertilizers, but you have to look at the data by yourself and evaluate how many actually are there, the treatments. So there are five different types of fertilizers, but there are also one uh, sample that is that represents the control sample. So actually the number of treatments in this problem should be six, not five, eh? should be six, because you are comparing the control as well together with the five different types of fertilizers. 
And it stated that uh, you have to use alpha equal to 0 0.01. Okay, now let's uh, go to the steps that we should do. Eh? The first step is to set the hypothesis. So you can express in words uh, by saying that there is no difference in the mean of n level in the Lian. Uh, or you can write in terms of the mathematical expression uh, mu, mu A is equal to mu B equal to mu C equal to mu D equal to mu E and equal to mu control. Okay, right. Mu is the uh, average because each of the treatment is represented by the mean value. So that is the null hypothesis. The alternative hypothesis, there are differences. Okay, so we can say mu A is not equal to mu B, it's not equal to mu C, it's not equal to mu D, it's not equal to mu E, and it's not equal to mu control. Okay, so that is the alternative hypothesis. Okay, step one is done. Right, now let's have a look at step two. Step two says that we have to fill the ANOVA table. So this is the basic form of the ANOVA table, right? Uh, the source of variation treatment error, then this one is the degree of freedom, the sum of squares, the mean square, and finally the F calculated, the F value. So we have to fill in these values. We have to find what is A, what's B, what's C, until I, yeah? until the F value. So how are we gonna fill in the ANOVA table? Uh, for the degree of freedom, it's quite uh, straightforward. Yeah? For the degree of freedom for the treatment, it's equal to t minus 1. Uh, t here is 6, right? And uh, 6 minus 1 is 5. Yeah? So that's how you get 5. And for the, for the degree of freedom for the error, it's n minus t. Right? So what is the n value over here? So the n is equal to the number of data. So there are six uh, samples and each of them has one two three four five so six times five is equal to 30 okay so if you count it by manually you will find at the end you will get 30 samples so now the n is uh, 30 um, t is six right and you get 24 okay? so that is how you fill in the value over here and here, this is uh, n minus 1. 30 minus 1 is 29. Okay, now, the uh, more complicated part is how we want to find this thing. Not to say complicated, but it's a bit um, tedious. All right, so we have to find what is the SST. This is SST, SSE, and this is MST, MSE, and finally the F value. Okay. So let's say uh, we rewrite yeah? we rewrite the data that we have and we add some more columns in order to calculate the values that uh, we need to calculate. Okay, so this is the original data, the data from the patient. Only data. Okay, so what we have to find out uh, we have to create another 6 plus 1 columns, yeah? So if you see here, this one, all this one, all straight away to the sum. And what we have to find is this expression, okay? This expression, okay? But before that, uh, what we have to also find is the mean for each of the treatment. So this is the treatment, right? The treatment. So uh, we denote the samples as um, Y1, Y2, Y3, Y4, Y5, and Y6. Uh, the average value for Y1, yeah, Y1 bar is the average value, uh, is given as 28.82. So this is um, solved by adding, by summing up all these things, right, divided by uh, 5. And you get 28.82. So this is the average. Yeah? And the same thing goes for the rest of the treatment. Uh, Y2 bar is 23.98. You sum up all of these things and divide it by 5. 
and the same thing for uh, other treatments. So that is how you get the average for every treatment. Now, uh, you have to find also what is the overall mean. So overall mean means that uh, once you have all the, the six means, right, you sum 28.82, sum up, plus 23.8, plus 14.64, plus 19.92, plus 13.26, plus 18.7, uh, divided by 6, then you get 19.8. 887. So that is overall mean. So you denote it as Y double bar. Okay, so just now uh, the, for every treatment, you only have one bar, single bar. So this is what I call bar. Okay, bar. So you have uh, the mean for every treatment, uh, the overall mean. Now, uh, what you have to do is you have to fill in um, this column actually. These things are the things that you have to find out. It's not given in the question, but this is already given here. So these values are the one that you have to calculate. So how you calculate each of these, uh, for example, this one, yeah? so it's given by yij minus y double bar, which is the overall mean. This is, uh, this is 19.887. And uh, the difference between yij and the y double bar, you square it and you get this value. Okay, so yij is referring to the value of each of the data. For example, for this one, uh, yij is 19.4. Okay, so like this one, yeah? 19.4 minus uh, 19.887, and then you square it, you will get a 0. 23684. Uh, yeah, four. yeah, so that's the value given over here. And the same thing that you find for the rest of the uh, columns, yeah, you find for its respective uh, values, yeah, this one and until 30. Okay, right, I hope that's clear. So that's how you find this, uh, this thing, yeah. And uh, at the end, you have to find the sum for every uh, row, for example, here is equal to 0 0.2368 plus 4.78 plus uh, 8.33 plus 0 0.66 plus 31.2 plus 6.69. So you get 51.9144. And you solve for the rest of the rows as well. Okay, now, um, if you sum up the values over here, okay, that will give you this value, which is 1129.975. So this value is actually TSS, uh, or if we refer to the, to the ANOVA table, this TSS is here. Okay, right now, uh, what we find, what we have to find next is um, SST. You don't have to find SST because uh, once you get the SST uh, and you know what the TSS, the SSE is equal to TSS minus uh, SST. Okay, so now how to find the SST? SST is uh, obtained by um, summing up this expression, this expression. So it means um, you have uh, the y double bar, okay? So for n is, um, n is 30, right? So how you solve this one um, is equal to 30 times, um, the y, each of these, uh, let's say uh, 28, uh, sorry, this one is, let me call it here. The n over here is referring to the n for every treatment, okay? Uh, for every treatment, you have five, eh? so like this one, five. Uh, so the y bar here is 28 
0.82 minus uh, y double bar is 19, 19.887 square plus, because this is summation, right? This symbol is summation. So uh, you go for the next one, which is five, um, 23.98 minus 19.887 square plus five, uh, 14.64. Yeah. So we are referring to these values. Yeah? This, this value is this one, these values. Okay, uh, minus your 19.9887 square plus uh, five multiplied by uh, the next one is 19.92 minus 19.98 uh, square plus um, five multiplied by 13.26 minus 19.9 s square plus and the last one is um 18.5 minus 19.988 square okay so the summation of all this stuff okay you will get at 47.0467 so that is sst uh so that is the value that you have to fill in here actually at 47.04. TSS is 1129.975 and SSE is equal to uh, TSS minus SST. So 1129.975 minus at 47.04. So the value is uh, SSE is a uh, two eight two two eight two point nine three. Okay. So now that is how you got the value of DSS uh, and SST. Okay. So you can fill in the value over here, right? And Consequently, you can get the value of this one, yeah? right? So once you are done with that, you can proceed with the next column, which is the mean square. Uh, the mean square is given by, for, S, for the treatment, is given by SST divided by the degree of freedom for the treatment, which is uh, 847. Right, so this one, 169.41E, e, is obtained by, let me write it properly. This one is obtained by finding the SST divided by degree of freedom for the treatment, which is 847.05 divided by 5, then let's give 169.41E. E. Okay, so that's how we got the MST. For MSE, you just use the value of uh, SSE divided by degree of freedom for the uh, error, which is uh, 282.93 divided by 24. So that's how you got 11.79. Okay, so here. And finally, the F value is obtained by finding the ratio uh, of MST to MSE. Yeah? So you just divide the value of MST, which is 169.41 uh, divided by 11.79, you'll get this value, 14.38, okay? So this is F calculated. Okay, we're not done yet. This is uh, only step two still. So now we know the F calculated, we proceed with the critical F, which will be obtained from the table. Um, so the degree of freedom for the uh, treatment is five, for the error is 24. So when we get, uh, when we see the table, yeah, 
referring to alpha equal to 0 0.01, the F critical is given as 3.9. Okay, so that is step 3. Step 4 is to compare the F calculated and the F table. So the F calculated from the ANOVA table that we calculated just now is 14.38 and F table is 3.9. Okay. So obviously the F calculated is greater than the F table. So it falls under this uh, decision. Yeah. We reject the null hypothesis and we accept the alternative hypothesis. Right. So the conclusion is that we have to add some more information at 0 0.01, yeah, level of significance, alpha equal to 0 0.1, uh, the mean and level of this uh, Belian, yeah, uh, or you see the xylon's regory ceilings is different, yeah, or you can say like there is a difference in all the means uh, compared uh, in this test, okay. So, Basically, the, the main point is there is a difference because we accept the alternative hypothesis. Please bear in mind the decision of uh, whether you accept the null or the alternative hypothesis is not yet the conclusion. You have to write proper words and proper sentences to uh, conclude the test. Okay, so that is the conclusion. And that is how we solve uh, an ANOVA problem, yeah, by applying all the five steps. Eh? So the tedious or the lengthy part was the step two because you have to solve for the each of the values in the ANOVA table, and for the SST and TSS just now you have to go through all this calculation, which is quite a lot. Yeah, uh, but the main thing here is that you have to. First, find the average for every treatment, find the overall mean, and apply this formula. Find the values for all the columns, yeah, the related columns. And then you solve for the TSS. And once you solve for that, you solve for SST. And from there, you can find, uh, you can fill in the table and solve for the SSE. And from there, you just proceed with the simple calculation. Eh? Like uh, for the mean square, just divide the SST, divide by the degree of freedom for the treatment, and same for the MSE, and finally, you got the F yeah, value. So that is step two, right? Uh, and the first step just now is the hypothesis. Uh, yeah, so step three is find the critical F value. Step four, make a decision, and step five, make a conclusion. So those are the five steps. Yeah? Um, so yeah, that's it. That wraps up this lecture. So what you should know from this lecture is uh, what is ANOVA, where and when you use it. Uh, you use it when you have more than two samples to be compared, yeah, at least three and above. Um, and uh, you should know some uh, basics of ANOVA, yeah? what is one-way ANOVA. So in this case, just now we are discussing one-way ANOVA or only one factor. Uh, one way is referring to factor or the variable. Uh, and then the final part just now was uh, the steps of ANOVA. So you have to know what you have to do step-by-step uh, step in order to solve the ANOVA-related problem. Okay. So these are the steps, the summary of steps. Yeah, yeah so that's it for uh, this lecture, is the introduction of ANOVA. Eh? So we are going to look at uh, the continuation of ANOVA in the next lecture. Yeah?